Welcome back to another video this is a part 17 of. What if Issei fell in love with Sona after Rias broke his heart? I don't really want to drag out the intro so let's get started. Chapter 64, Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Sorry, I screwed up this chapter earlier, just fixed it now. Have you ever had one of those days where you get your fictions mixed up in your head? Anyway. I accidentally placed Kuroka in this, as if she were from my earlier fiction, Betrayal of a Lifetime, well, that has been resolved. Essentially, this chapter has been rewritten with extra dialogue and such. Please reread, sorry again, Chapter 64, uh oh. Scene, Kuo Academy, oh, we aren't going this way, Kyoto kun rather, we are going over here. Aika tugged on Issei's shirt as they changed direction. Issei feels like something is most definitely up with Aika. So, um, I've gotta ask. Where are we going? I am so glad that you asked. Well, we are going in here. Aika opened the door to the gym storage room. As Aika walked in first with Issei behind her, the room had very small windows and it was rather dark. Hearing the door behind them slam shut, Issei turned around and flinched suddenly. Standing in front of the now closed door was both Kates and Murayama, both brandishing their bamboo swords. Each girl had a mildly sadistic expression as the two pointed toward another end of the room. Turning his head, Issei saw a single wooden chair. Standing next to the chair was now Aika, as she was holding onto a large bit of thick rope. Both kendo girls then cleared their throats at the same time. This prompted the confused and slightly aroused teen toward the chair. Seen, streets of Ku. Mommy, what's Papa's school like? Kuno was walking beside her mother with a curious smile. Holding a traditional Japanese-style umbrella, Yusaka replied with a smile of her own. Well, it's a large establishment with quite a few students. Also, don't feel embarrassed with all of the constant stares we are sure to receive, foo foo foo, the fox queen giggles into her kimono sleeve. So, when I go to school, will I get to have fun like Papa Kun does? Kuno looked up at her mother with her large and golden eyes. Yusaka thinks for a moment and then speaks. Well, I don't see why not. Up until now, I've had you school with the servants' children back at home, but since we are more or less staying here, well. Kuno giggles. Well, I think I wouldn't mind wearing one of those uniforms, they look really cute. Yusaka closes her eyes and nods. Yes, honey, yes. I'm sure it can all be arranged. The Fox Queen's eyes widen suddenly. Era era, I forgot to let everyone know that I must leave Kuo every three days. Kuno shrugs. It's only for a couple hours mommy. It's like watching an episode and a half of Milky Spiral. Scene, Kuo Academy, Student Council Office. Where the hell is Hyodo? Momo had a mouthful of food as she decided to say what was on her mind. Subaki, who was looking almost nervous, looked toward Sona who was sitting at her large desk with an expression of concern. President, would you like me to investigate? Sona nods. Thanks, Subaki. I wonder if that Kiba jerk is holding him up, like that last time. Saji mentions with a grim expression. Well, it's best not to dwell on such things. Sona looks through her window with a curious expression. The rest of the student council stand from their couches and chairs and gather near the window. Scene, gym storage room. As Aika was tying the last knot on Issei's wrist, she giggled in a disturbing way. Hehehehe, <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. Kates and Murayama grabbed hold of a lamp that was next to a locker and hung it over Issei's head. As the bright light was being put directly into his face, Issei showed a grimace. What the hell? Talk. Hyodo, tell us everything. The occult research club, the student council, your alleged wife. Spill. Kates demanded. Seriously, whose stupid idea was this? Look, I'm hungry and I just want to eat. Besides, I haven't peeped on any of you, so you don't have any right to do this to me. Go after those chuckleheads, Matsuda and Motohama if you want revenge or whatever this is. Issei shouted angrily as the bright light was giving him a headache. All three girls looked back at one another and then turned their attention back onto Issei. Let me try, Kates. Murayama insisted while smiling. Hyodo, ever since you joined the orc, things have gotten weird with you. It's true, we can't fault you for peeping, not anymore. But, believe it or not, Aika, Kates and I have been worrying about you. 
Kates argues. That's crap. We just wanna know what methods he's using to entrap those poor girls. Ika giggles. Such a tsunere. He he he. Shut up. Four eyes. Kates argues back, ignoring her best friend. Murayama continues as Issei looks gobstopped. Well, we know that something happened with you and Ria Senpei. You can't hide that fact, as rumors spread around like wildfire throughout the school. Then there is the matter with President Sauna Shatori. To be honest, your decision to involve yourself with your ex-enemies is very weird. Lastly, that day when your very pretty and older wife showed up. Come on, Hyodo, you can tell us. Make this easy on yourself. Murayama smiles very warmly. Like she said, Baka, make it easy on yourself, otherwise, Kate swung her bamboo sword against the floor, next to Issei's shin. The next time, it will be your legs. The smaller kendo girl was grinning. Issei grinds his teeth. Get that stupid light out of my face. All three girls back off while seeing a strangely angry looking Hyodo. After a moment, Issei takes a deep breath and stares back at all three girls, one by one. Well, if you really want to know, I'd suggest sitting down for this. Issei slowly begins to grin. Aika, Kates and Murayama look at one another and slowly sit down on the floor in front of Issei's chair. Nodding, Issei takes one more deep breath. I'm not human, not anymore, that is. Kates immediately bursts out laughing. Ha 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 ha. Well that's obvious, there ain't a human alive that is as depraved as you. Issei's grin fell into a serious frown as his brown eyes bore into Kates's. You think I'm bullshitting you? Kates shut up and stopped smiling. Issei closes his eyes as a pair of black and leather-like wings erupt from his back. This made Aika fall onto her back as she couldn't believe what just happened. Kates's eyes widened in horror as a small shriek was released from her lips. Murayama sat put and hardly flinched, though her face showed an expression of absolute fear. I see that I have your undivided attention. Issei opens his eyes while beginning to smile. Instantly, all three girls rose to their feet. Kates backed into a corner as Aika was making a very slow approach toward Issei. Murayama watched Aika in anticipation as she was curious to know as to what might happen now. Issei simply sits still as the smile remains on his face. Noticing that Aika was the braver one out of the group, the team flexed his wings a few times. Yeah, they're real, Issei spoke lightly, Aika nodded as a very wide smile took over the girl's lips. Can I touch them? Issei nods. Without a second glance, Aika reached out and placed both hands on Issei's left wing. Oh wow, ladies, come here. This ain't some trick. Aika was softly caressing the wing in her hand. Issei, never having anyone ever touch him on his wings didn't know how to react. It was a foreign feeling, but it wasn't a bad one. Murayama looked behind her and at Kates. Both girls nodded and approached Issei with a bit of caution. Eventually, the other two were now touching his right wing. It's softer than it looks. Murayama admitted. Yeah, Kates agreed. Aika then finally asked the question. Hyodo, what are you? Issei, while truly enjoying what he was feeling, nodded and spoke quietly. I'm a devil. Instantly, both Kates and Aika backed away, however Murayama stayed put and continued to caress the wing that was in her hands. Devil, Aika squeaked as she was standing next to Kates, both a few paces away from Issei. Murayama giggles as she now has both wings in each of her hands. Kates is superstitious, he he he. Shut up, Murayama, he's an actual devil, Kates shouted back. Issei looked upward only to see Murayama looking back down at him as she smiled warmly. So, can you untie me? Shaking her head, Murayama replies quietly. Not yet. Just give me a few more minutes. Seriously. Come on, I just spilled my guts. Issei begged. Nah uh, nope, sorry. First, I want to talk about you and Rias. Knock knock knock. The locked door was now being knocked on. Everyone turned their attention toward the entrance. Open the door please. Oh, very well. Kuno, sweetheart, please stand behind me dear, let mommy handle this. This was clearly Yasaka's voice from behind the door. After a sudden and yellow glow covered the door, it then made an unlocking sound before slowly opening. Walking through was indeed Yasaka, with Kuno following closely behind her. The Fox Queen's golden eyes looked around the room and at each person that was present. 
Once her eyes trained on Issei, the woman's usual smile was now replaced with an angry scowl. Issei was bound to a chair while three girls looked to be interrogating and or torturing the Fox Queen's husband. As one of her eyebrows twitched, the woman pointed her folded umbrella toward all three females, one by one. Explain yourselves, humans, what on earth are you doing to my husband? Amaterasu herself wouldn't stop me from tearing all of you to pieces. The blonde woman was now showing some of her fox-like animalistic instincts as her lips were curled over a pair of large canine teeth. Smiling, Issei stood from his chair very casually as the bindings broke with ease. Yusaka, please, this was all just a childhood prank. All three girls were now huddled into the corner of the room as they watched Issei Hyodo break his ropes as if they were nothing. It's true, he really is a devil, but that was an afterthought considering the girl's current situation. Unacceptable, Yusaka declared with some authority behind her voice. Issei knew there was nothing he could do. This was Yusaka of Kyoto and she was pissed off. Looking back at his angry wife and then back toward Aika and the Kendo girls, Issei knew that his high school colleagues were about to suffer the wrath of a kitsune. Issei facepalms. What are you going to do? Looking at each girl with animosity, Yusaka replies in a devious tone. Sweetheart, please be quiet as mommy corrects these naughty little girls. Yusaka's tails were now swinging wildly in different directions. Instantly, Kates, Murayama and Aika each noticed a golden-colored tail creeping its way at lightning speed toward each of them. Being huddled in the corner as they were, there was no escape. One by one, each girl was now ensnared by their waist with powerful, fluffy, golden foxtails. While this was happening, Kuno suddenly grabbed hold of Issei's shirt. Hi, Papa Kun. Looking down, Issei smiled brightly and picked the little fox princess up and hoisted her on his shoulder. Well hello yourself, Kuno. Did you guys walk all the way here? Yup. I was telling mommy about how I want to come here when I grow up a little. Kuno said excitedly but then she remembered something. Oh, mommy forgot to tell you. Something important. After she is finished teaching these bad girls who's boss, remind her. Wow, yeah, Kuo Academy is a great school. Oh, she forgot something. Okay, kiddo, I'll remember. Issei smiled. Both father and daughter now turn their attention back onto, mother dearest who has all three girls slowly being pulled toward her as they struggle against her tails. So, you three kidnap my husband. You deprive him of precious food during his only time to eat at school. You then interrogate him as if he were some common criminal. If this were the Edo period, let's just say that you'd be hanging by your toes for weeks on end in some damp and smelly prison cell. Luckily for you, I am lenient. Using another of her tails, Yusaka reaches for one of the bamboo swords, that are now laying on the floor. Let's see, ah, Kates is it. We shall start with you. Using her tail to change Katis' direction from facing her, the pink-haired girl's behind was now exposed to Yusaka. Grinning, the fox queen takes hold of the bamboo sword within her own hand and proceeds to spank Kates. Eek, ouch, stop, I'm sorry, wah, Kates cried out in agony. Chapter 65 Sona's Chance, a high school DxD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 65, Another Hot Spring Adventure. Scene, Kuo Academy. Please, I am so sorry, ma'am. Murayama's brown and watery eyes had a look of desperation in them as the high schooler received another swat to her behind with the bamboo sword. Era era, begging are we. Were you going to be so lenient with my husband in your little Inquisition escapade? Yusaka is showing a hint of sadism in her usually warm smile. Meanwhile, Kates and Aika are back in the corner and on their knees while they hug each other. Both girls had their hands against their behinds as they attempted to relieve the pain inflicted by Yusaka's punishment. As Murayama is wrapped in several fox tails while her butt is facing the menacing fox queen, she manages to squeal out a reply. I wouldn't let anything go too far. I like Hyodo. Murayama whimpered as a blush took hold of her cheeks. Yusaka immediately lowers the brown-haired teen to the floor and releases her. Nothing but her usual crescent-shaped smile remained on her flawless face. Finally, the truth comes out. Well then, I suppose you three have learned your lessons, yes. Yusaka raises an eyebrow, waiting for a response. Both Aika and Kates yell in unison. Yes ma'am. Murayama nods. We will be respectful with Hyodo Issei from now on. I'm sorry. 
Nodding back, Yasaka responds as one of her golden eyes begins to close. Era era, I see, I see. Well then, turning her attention back toward a bewildered looking Issei, Yusaka continues. It seems as though Kates Yui, Murayama Kaori and Kuryu Aika here are all smitten with you, my dear. Aika replies with an angry scowl. Now way, not true, Kyoto, Iyu. Kates nods in agreement, seriously, gross. Murayama however shakes her head slowly. The jig is up, girls. That fox lady can read minds or something. Kuno shouts out while having a small fit. Mommy is Yusaka of Kyoto. Don't call her fox lady. Issei pats the little fox princess on her head. There, there, I'm sure they didn't mean any disrespect. Issei looks back toward the three girls while raising his own eyebrow. Right, all three instantly nod over enthusiastically. Yusaka nods in satisfaction. Well then, Issei, since lunch has been cut short, I think a small retreat to Beppu Oita might be in order. What do you think, Kuno? The Kendo girls and Aika show expressions of confusion. Beppu, isn't that a hot spring? Aika asks suddenly. Before Issei can get a word in, Kuno replies. It's the bestest hot spring in the world. Yeah, mommy, let's eat lunch with daddy in. Beppu. Kunu's eyes have golden stars in them. Kates looks back at Murayama and then Aika. All three girls return some silent nod. Um, Mrs. Yasaka, ma'am. Kates tries to hold in her excitement. Yasaka turns around and looks down at a prostrating and kneeling Kates. Yes, dear, Aika then yells out from behind Kates. Can we go too? The girl had a grin plastered to her face. Murayama also nodded. Hot springs sound really nice. Issei looks back at Yusaka and finally has a moment to say something. Um, Yusaka, lunch at a high school is 30 minutes. It's already almost time for the bell to go off for classes again. Seemingly ignoring what her husband was mentioning, the fox queen simply waves her arm into the air as her tails begin to dance. Instantly, the lights within the gym storage room began to flicker and dim. Issei speaks up again, also, even if we use the ley lines, time is still a factor. Yusaka, are you listening to me? If I miss class, Sona is gonna be on my butt like white on rice. Shaking her head, the blonde woman smiles back toward Issei. Sweetheart, stop stressing. Mommy Yusaka has everything under control. So, how about you come closer? As the fox queen outstretched her free arm toward Issei, who still had Kuno on his shoulders the teen took hold. Another instant and then a large and multicolor portal manifested near the entrance way of the room. Kates, Murayama and Aika were all three hugging each other in fear. Kuno then spoke up while pointing toward the three girls in the corner. They said they wanted to come along. Issei and Yusaka turned their attention back to the kendo girls and Aika. Era era, well, if Issei is okay with it, I suppose they can come along. That is of course, assuming each one of you has learned your lesson, yes. Yusaka looks at each girl with a hint of warning behind her golden eyes. All three nod, well, girls, please, come close and let's all get cuddly. The fox queen's tails dance had stopped as three individual appendages made their way to each of the girls. The remaining tails instantly snagged Issei as he was pulled into his usual place at Yusaka's chest. As the three remaining girls were being snuggled into Yusaka, Kuno stayed put on Issei's shoulders while smiling excitedly. Beppu, Beppu, Papa to Mama to Isho ni onsen e. The fox princess declared, ladies, I suggest keeping close. Yusaka warned as the three struggling girls were forcefully pushed against her. Issei was unable to speak as his face was being hugged by the two things he loves most. Scene Fenex Mansion, Underworld. Ravel darling, I think you would look lovely in this dress. Lady Fenex was currently holding a silver colored outfit while others were laying on a large bed. Mom, I can dress myself. Ravel stomped her foot down. Trust me when it comes to fashion, dearest. After all, we want to wow your red dragon emperor, don't we? Lady Phoenix then winked. Blushing deeply, Ravel shook her head. I don't have the foggiest of what you are implying, mother. Oh really? Well, I suppose I will speak with your father and tell him the terrible news. The lady of the house was now smirking. Wait, what, what do you mean, terrible news? Ravel was now tugging at her mother's dress. Well, 
since you clearly don't like the idea of marriage with the Hyodo boy, then I suppose I must tell your father. After all of the convincing on my part too, what a waste indeed. Lady Phoenix was still smirking and waiting for her daughter's obvious reply. No, don't tell him that. Ravel tugged harder at her mother's dress. Tilting her head, the lady replies while acting surprised. Oh, could it be that you are indeed in love with Hyodo Issei? Better tell me now, before I speak with your father. Um, Ravel, was now nervously running her fingers through her blonde drills. Love is such a strong word, mother. Really now, the lady tilts her head to the other side. But, but, he's with Rias and, Ravel begins to make excuses as her blush increases. Haven't you heard dear, the two are having a terrible fight. Now is your chance to strike, my little Phoenix. Instantly, the lady had a look of determination on her face as she smiled brightly down at her little daughter. Suddenly feeling a bit motivated, Ravel begins to smile. Okay, mom, let's look at some other dresses. Scene, Beppu Oida, Japan. As soon as Yasaka released Aika, Murayama and Kates, she then pulled Issei's head from her cleavage. At first, heavy clouds of steam and vapor were the only visible things to be seen. After another moment, the sounds of water along with the scent of sulfur took hold of the senses as the hot springs finally became visible. Issei took a deep breath. Seems like we were here just the other day, ha ha ha. Yasaka giggles. Foo foo foo, indeed. Oh yes, time, I almost forgot. As Aika, Kates and Murayama stared around in shock and awe, Yasaka began to mutter a small mantra. Haiwa no tokidisu, Kyuke no jikandasu, Kaden o tamit kudasai, Genin o tamit kudasai. The fox queen then closed her eyes as the day instantly turned into night. Issei was looking up at that now evening sky with a puzzled expression. Yasaka san, what did you just do? Foo 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 foo. The blonde woman was laughing into her sleeve as her fox ears flew forward and back. I just created a small pocket dimension. Time has no meaning here. Kates points at Yasaka with a terrified expression. I can't believe it. Issei looks back at Kates as he lifts an eyebrow. Can't believe what? Now pointing her finger toward Issei, Kates replies. You actually are married to a god. Issei laughed. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yasaka shakes her head while still smiling. Please don't think of me as some sort of pantheon. I am just Yasaka, foo foo foo. Murayama made her way toward the hot and steaming water as she reached down and placed her hand in. Oh yeah, this is definitely Beppu Oida. She then turned attention back onto Aika and Kates. Kates, just go with it. Aika, find the girl's changing room. She then turns toward Yasaka. Um, that's okay, right. Hee <laughs> hee. Moments later, we can see the kendo girls, along with Aika and little Kuno, sitting together in the large hot spring. They all have towels wrapped around them as they each lay comfortably against the large and smooth rocks. While this was happening, Yusaka and Issei were sitting at an outdoor table next to the hot spring. Yusaka was watching Issei eat her homemade bento with a loving smile. Enjoying every bite, Issei finally noticed a pair of golden eyes staring back at him. Not able to help it, the teen can't help but blush. She is just so damn pretty. I don't think I will ever get used to this. Before he knew it, Yusaka was now reaching over the table as her face got ever so close. She then elegantly reached for a stray piece of sticky rice, which was on the teen's cheek and then cutely ate said rice. Oh dear lord in hell, she did the manga thing. Did Seraphal teach her this? Dude, she is just so adorable. Issei was attempting not to make a big deal about the small gesture. Era era, that's all it takes. Well then, flustering you shouldn't be a challenge in the near future, foo 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 foo. Yasaka leaned back in her chair and giggled into her kimono sleeve. Then, inside Issei's mind, ha, ah, she can read your thoughts, or did you forget, partner? Shut up, Dedrag, I know, I know, Issei mentally replied in haste. Scene, unknown location. The stupid TV thingy is acting up again. Kuroka was slapping the purple glowing viewing. Or, Ophis tilts her head. The fox did something. Very well, it's time. Kuroka looks back at the infinite dragon god in confusion. N-Y-A. What do you mean, it's time? Ophis takes a look around her bedroom. I don't like it here anymore. She then looks back at Kuroka with a small smile. 
I think it's time that we talk to the Sekiryute's mother and father. Kuroka is now extremely confused. To what end? Ophis tilts her head. They will allow us to live in the Sekiryute's home. If we have their blessing, as they call it, then even Yasaka of Kyoto and the devils would be powerless to stop me. Kuroka thinks about Ophis's words for a moment. NYA, so let me get this straight. You want to talk the boy's parents into letting us live there. But what about Sirzex's sister? I'm a wanted devil, I'll go to never have kittens prison. Calm yourself, Nako. Have you forgotten who I am? Ophis looked rather serious now. There isn't a creature aside from Great Red that has a fraction of my power. Kuroka suddenly smiled warmly while reaching for the Lolita's hand. Are you saying that you'd protect me, NYA? Noticing the happy Nako devil holding onto her, Ophis all but nodded. Chapter 66 Sona's Chance, a high school DXD fanfiction written by Christopher Zazel. Chapter 66, Training Arrangements. Scene, Beppu Oida, Japan. So there are devils, angels, yokai and crap ton of other gods and stuff. So then, are all religions correct? Aika placed a cold damp towel to her head. Murayama, who adjusts herself against the large and smooth rock shrugs shortly afterwards. Seems like, I guess. Kates takes a moment to ponder and then replies. Well, technically, all religions are correct and wrong, at the same time. I mean, the contradictions alone are enough to boggle the mind. Yup, it's a weird world that we live in, that's for sure. Kuno, who was in between Kates and Murayama, used one of her tails to reach for a folded and damp towel. Era era, well, isn't this just pleasant? All of us, just enjoying ourselves and talking like civilized people. Yes, I find this very acceptable. Yasaka pulls Issei closer to her using an arm. Across from Kates, Murayama, Aika and Kuno, were both Issei and Yasaka, who were leaning against an equally large and smooth rock. Issei blushes a bit from the action of his wife but finishes his recap of the supernatural world. So yeah, all of that stuff is real. Heck, even King Arthur shit is real. You guys probably won't believe me, but my partner, Dedrag, well he kinda ate one of those Excalibur swords. But yeah, it's like what Kuno-chan said, it's a weird world, for sure. Kates and Murayama lift opposite eyebrows at the same time. Excalibur, like the sword. Kates speaks up with curiosity behind her tone. Issei shrugs, yeah, I guess there are a bunch of them, but I got this one. Um, Dedrag, how do I work the damn thing? Green and red glowing light began to reflect around the mist that surrounded the party. That Xenobia Amazon called it, Destruction, I believe. So, let's call it, Destruction Blade. Though, you might have a bit of trouble with it at first. Issei's arm stopped glowing. Whoa, that's the dragon thing you were talking about. Aika pointed excitingly toward Issei. Nodding, Issei then speaks up. Um, okay then, here goes. Destruction Blade. Destruction Blade, after the boosted gear had manifested onto Issei's arm, a large protrusion in the shape of a double-sided sword was sticking out from the top side of his wrist. Flexing his claws Issei noticed a bit of a problem. As his arm was extended, instantly the weight of this new weapon forced Issei's gauntlet down and now into the water. What the fuck, Didrag, what is this? Why is this thing so heavy? The team was using his other hand to help pull his gauntlet from the water but to no avail. Murayama, Kates and Aika were watching the scene play out as Kuno started to cheer her pop on. Come on, pull harder, you can do it. The fox princess clapped her hands together. Meanwhile Yasaka was studying the situation as she began to slowly place her hand into the water and onto Issei's gauntlet. Without even the slightest hint of effort, Issei now had his arm being held out from the water by none other than the fox queen herself. Era era, how very interesting, my love. Pulling the blade closer toward her eyes, the fox queen continues. Dragon Coon, are you thinking what I am thinking? The red gauntlet with the blade sticking out begins to glow in crimson and emerald. Indeed, my partner needs to learn how to use a sword before this remnant of Excalibur will recognize him as its owner. Kates and Murayama suddenly stare at one another. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Kates slightly grins, nodding. Murayama smiles excitedly. Oh yeah, I'm totally on board. Then both girls turn their attention back toward Issei and Yasaka. If Hyodo needs to learn about swordsmanship, 
Murayama and I can totally help out. Kate stood from the hot spring while showing a heroic pose. As long as you don't mind joining the kendo club, that is. Murayama was blushing. Issei looked back at the now standing Kates and the still halfway submerged Murayama. Really, after all of the lecherous and perverted things that I did, alongside those idiots, you guys still wanna help me. Kates, who is maintaining her heroic pose, simply nods. Totally. After all, you're a married man now, so that means we don't have to worry about you doing anything indecent. She then looks toward Yusaka. Isn't that right, Yusaka-sama? Showing the slightest of grins, Yusaka lets go of Issei's gauntlet, causing him to collapse into the hot spring. Splash. Deactivating the gauntlet, Issei rose his head from the water while coughing a bit. Hey, Yusaka. Issei looked a bit cross as he pulled his wet bangs from his face. Foo 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 foo. The guilty party was completely enjoying the scene that was in front of her. Oh, sweetheart, foo foo foo. Era era. I couldn't help but notice a specific thought, involving a specific locker room. Kates immediately sat back down into the hot spring. Wait, I almost forgot about that. Hyodo, Matsuda and Motohama, always in our locker room, doing who knows what. Murayama nods. Maybe we should make him suffer a punishment game as penance for his previous behavior. Aika joins the conversation as she pulls the damp towel from her forehead. I heard. Punishment. And I heard. Game. Tell me more. Kuno looked to have fallen asleep against the large rock formation as she rested against Murayama. Zzz zzz zzz. Issei shook his head. That's not fair. First of all, I can't help my thoughts. Yusaka. Not fair. Second. I ain't gonna do anything weird, so stop assuming stuff. And third, Aika, stay out of this. The team then folded his arms. In all seriousness, learning styles of swordplay would definitely make a difference. As I said, this specific blade is a stubborn one, so you have to dominate it, make it submit. I would suggest joining your former rivals. Maybe include Kiba Yudo in your training. Bottom line. Partner, the sword fragment will remain heavy until you learn how to wield it. The more you learn, the lighter it should get. The gauntlet stopped glowing, nodding. Issei smiled. Ha, ah, you said I need to make it submit. Well, we're the Red Dragon Emperor of Domination, this is gonna be a piece of cake. Glowing even brighter than before, the drag's voice amplified in excitement. That's the spirit, partner. Give it your all, did Issei's. Dragon just call us formal rivals. Murayama lifted an eyebrow. Sweet, we almost sound like ex-villains gone ally, like something from a badly written manga. Hell yeah, thanks for the compliment. Um, dragon. Kates grinned proudly. Aika rubbed the fog from her glasses due to the steam everywhere. Well, I guess I can learn how to swing a stupid bamboo stick too. Yusaka began to laugh into her sleeve as her eyes fell upon her daughter, who was sleeping soundly against Murayama. Foo foo foo. Well then, I suppose I should take Kuno back. Being a mother can be taxing, however it is truly rewarding. Issei shuffles through the water and toward the little fox princess. Murayama blushes as the wet and brown-haired teen reaches over her and picks up the little fox girl. Shuffling back toward Yusaka, Issei hands her off into her mother's arms. Thank you for this, all of this, Yusaka. Issei smiles warmly, nodding. The fox queen winks once. Of course, husband, when I return you, remember to hurry home after school, you have that dinner at the Phoenixes this evening. I must make sure we take the time to dress you properly. After some time, Yusaka was successful in getting Issei and company back to their school before the lunch period was over. The rest of the day was relatively uneventful. Scene, Hyodo home. The main door of the house opens, revealing Sona, Tsubaki, Akino, Kaneko, Asia and Issei. The small group noticed another group of people in the Hyodo living room. Issei's parents along with Yusaka and Kuno were present and sitting on one of the large couches. Meanwhile, Kalawarner and Mitelt were each sharing an armchair, all of whom had cups of tea in their hands. After pleasantries were exchanged, Issei looked around the house and didn't notice a specific person. Hey everyone, where is Rias at? Issei blinked a few times. Issei's father spoke up while smiling at his cup of tea. Oh, her big brother, you know, hey, the devil king, well he came and picked her up. 
I was told that they are doing a bit of family stuff and not for you to worry. That's what Sirzex said anyway. He was smiling, so I'm sure it's nothing serious. Scene, familiar forest. Ria Tan, I must say that I am very proud of you for this. Sirzex was speaking nervously as he pulled a large tree branch out from his tangled red hair. But isn't this a little extensive? Helping her husband with his issue, Graphia replied as she successfully untangled Sirzek's hair. No, no, Sirzek Sama, I think this is a very thoughtful action. Graphia nodded while showing a slight smile. Meanwhile, little Rias was walking in between the two older devils. She was wearing what looked to be some kind of explorer outfit along with a yellow hard hat. She was showing a very determined expression as she trekked along. That Ash Ketchum on meth guy should be around here somewhere. The familiar master knew where to find that one thing he liked. Rias was staring at a large paper map as she turned on her flashlight, which was attached to her hard hat. Looks like we should be where we are supposed to be, hum. Suddenly, the sounds of three different voices could be heard. Prepare for trouble, and make it double, to protect the underworld from devastation. To unite all devils within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jamie, Jess, Team Knock It, cause you to the sound of night. Surrender now, or prepare to fight. Barked. That's right. Sirzex, Graphia and Rius were now staring at three individuals who looked to be in some sort of pose. Aside from the strange and almost comical looking dog creature, the other two were what appeared to be humans wearing funny looking costumes. Each of their shirts had a large and purple colored co stamped on the front. The female, Jamie had pale purple colored hair while her partner, Jess, was a male with long and wavy red hair. Sirzex tilts his head as these three individuals continue to maintain their pose, which looked absolutely ridiculous in the Devil King's eyes. All right, where is the familiar master? And who are you three? Scene, Issei's bedroom, Hyodo home. Oh yes, that was indeed a good choice. A red tie does indeed fit the part. What do you think? Sona Chan, Serifal Chan. Yasaka was adjusting Issei's collar. Seraphal giggles. He he he. I'd rather see him in a tuxedo, with a top hat and maybe a single red rose. Sona facepalms at her older sister's comment while quickly recovering and replying to Yasaka's question. I think he looks civilized. She then crosses her arms while showing a slight hint of agitation. Well, I'd better see you wearing something like that for our next date, Kyoto. Wearing a two-piece black dress coat along with a red tie, Issei looked through his mirror while pulling his bangs from his eyes. Sona, I'd wear whatever you want whenever you want, or have you forgotten the sleeping situation at your old place? Issei smirked, knowing how that answer would affect his Sunere girlfriend. Sona immediately blushed while remembering the time that Issei was wearing Subsaki's nightwear, twice in two nights. Seraphal giggles, wow. So Tan, you've got our Issei here wrapped around your little finger, don'tcha? Yasaka clears her throat as she raises her pinky into the air. Instantly a thin and red strand appears on the Fox Queen's finger as the other end is attached to Issei's. Ahem, technically, I have Issei wrapped around my finger. Era era. Yasaka grins as Issei is suddenly wrapped with the red string of fate in such a way as to where his face is now forced in between his wife's cleavage. Well this story will be put on hold till Christopher Zazel has some more parts so I'm not done posting on this story I'm just gonna start uploading about some other fanfictions until the new chapters for Sona's chance release now then what DXD fanfictions do you want me to upload vids about let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions.